welcome to Andrew Jackson Cottage here in the lovely Eden Village. I'm Madeline from Kathleen's Attic, which is my own business where we try to teach traditional crafts and keep them alive as well as focusing on local folklore. So today here in the cottage we're going to look at uh, a craft activity that the ladies and the children of the house would have participated in in the evenings uh, coming into the autumn time and this is called rag rug making. There are different types of rag rug making so today the one I'm doing is with a hook but we have an example here in the cottage of a proddy rug which is also done uh, with a hook and this is called an aisle. So you would push this through your hessian which is your backing fabric and pull the strips up but today as I say I'm using the hook method. Now, in a cottage like this, we have flagstone floors, and I don't know if you've ever been walking on flagstones, but the cold can certainly creep up through you uh, in the winter. So the family here would have sat in the evenings around the fire, and they would have been cutting strips of fabric, like this. This would have been the children's job. So if you can imagine everyone around the fire, just sitting, chatting, and cutting these strips of fabric. Uh, meanwhile, the older girls and possibly any ladies in the house would have been preparing the hessian and here we have the hessian. And they would have uh, got the hessian from potato sacks and things that would have been coming through with their produce, maybe even flour sacks. And they got the fabric from clothes that really no longer they could wear at all. Now rags at the time would have been sold, I'm sure a lot of you know about rag and bone men, and rags would have been sold because they went to make paper, although there were different grades of rags. So anything that was cotton would have been sold for paper, but also cotton would have been used to make patchwork quilts. Again, there's some great examples here in the cottage from the collections. Uh, however, the best fabric for a rag rug that's going on the floor would be anything that had a woolen base. If you can think if you're wearing something that's woolen, it's much warmer, it's quite a sturdy fabric so it'll handle lots of feet going over it uh, through the day. So, however, I'm not in the 18th century so we're going to use modern fabrics uh, but the technique is still the same and I love the idea that's something that women were doing way back one, two, three hundred years ago. We can still do today, but maybe make it more modern. And to show that example, I have a box frame here where I have made a butterfly using the rag rug technique uh, that could go in a little girl's room. But I'm also, typical me, I have like three projects going on at the same time. This uh, is a Christmas wreath that I started. So, Come Christmas, it will be finished, uh, and I'll finish this off, but I'll show you today how you finish uh, as well as start, obviously. Now, back to Hessian. So, if you're using Hessian, please be aware that there are fibres that come off Hessian, and if you have asthma or any, you're allergic to any other type of pollens, the fibres that come off this could cause you uh, irritation in your throat um, and coughing. So please be aware of that. Um, I'm okay with the Hessian obviously, but if you find that you're struggling, you could use uh, a thick linen, which might work better for you. So we need Hessian. Um, we need our hook. These come in different sizes uh, and really the size I use depends on the fabric that I want to use. This one is a medium weight and because I'm using a modern day fleece, um, this hook I find is perfect for the fleece. Now if you look, we have the hook at the top and it's also then got a fatter shank. Now the shank is important when you're doing a rag rug because that is what is going to make the hole large enough to pull your fabric through. So, before you start, you might have an idea in your head what it is you want to make, and what you want to make will also link to the fabric you want to use. Now, I did a little sample here just to show you. Some fabrics come and they're black 
in this case on one side but the other side is white the way it has been woven and when you pull it through you can see a two-tone effect so if you're happy with the two-tone effect that's fine some people maybe don't want that and want black if that was the case then you need to use fabric that is black both front and back now if you want to use this is a silky fabric here and if you can see here there's little frayed sections I like the frayed sections I think it gives it a bit of more texture but it's not sturdy so here I have made a brooch using the silk fabric and that works fine it's light uh, it'll hold the pin and when you put it on well I think it still looks good however if I was using this as a pot holder this fabric would be no good at all it would singe and burn easily so um, I wouldn't advise that uh, this fabric I like it it's a woolen fabric it's two-toned but it has a little bit of sparkle through it but once you put it on now I don't like the combination of colors so if you do make a mistake don't worry about it all you have to do is turn it over grab one of the ends pull it out and the whole thing will just pop out and you can change your mind now if you also see here uh, when you're going to draw your design on your hessian you need to leave two to four inches around each edge of your pattern now I purposely did this to show you what happens as you handle the hessian you find that it starts to fray and if you notice at this side it has frayed to the point where it's right beside the fabric whereas this side still has a good you know, two inches the problem is when this frays when you're trying to finish off you haven't really got enough fabric to turn it under it becomes very difficult to sew so my advice is try and remember to leave a good border uh, around your pattern so in this case um, this is going to be a place mat if you can see uh, I've left two inches around the side uh, of the pattern and I've used a marker pen to draw some sort of a design in the middle now I started doing this design and I was using large spaces and by the time I got over here I thought mm, maybe I should have used smaller spaces so I did and then when I looked at the final pattern I thought nope I should have used large spaces so what I can do now is as I am starting to rag rug I can just you know change the design as I work however if you're just starting to make rag rugs you could do your pattern using chalk and if you don't like it a little damp cloth will wipe the chalk marks off and once you get something you're happy with then use the marker pen for your final design so uh, ready to start so you choose your fabrics and again I would advise you to uh, think about the whole project before you start don't just pick up a fabric that you like and then you find that you've only got enough to do a tiny section where really you would have needed you know, at least red here and red here to balance it off. So make sure before you start, you have all the colors that you want for your piece. And then comes the task of cutting your fabric into strips. Now, I usually use strips that can be from one centimeter to an inch, depending on what I'm trying to create. Um, this wreath, it was centimeter strips so I'm going back to my centimetre strips uh, for the wreath. I'll do that later. But I want to show you the technique first of all. Now, the hook is always facing up. Your tool should never be that way round. Okay? It should always be facing up. And you really start on the lines. So you push the hook on the line through the hessian. And do you remember earlier I was talking about the shank? But you can see if I just push to there, if I take that out, the hole isn't really large enough to get the fabric pulled through. So what you do is you have to push it right down, you can see, the whole length of the shaft. 
And now we get our section, I'm using black for this. Then we get our section of fabric. Now the hook is still facing upwards. We slip our fabric in underneath the hook and then you pull back up through. Okay, so when you're starting off, it can be a little bit fiddly. Now, you can have your hoop whatever size you wish. I tend to work on loops that are again around a centimetre in height because I find if I was using this to stand a pot on, for example, um, here we have a coaster. Now if I was sitting a glass or a mug on that, you need a flat surface, otherwise the whole thing could topple and fall. So that's really why I keep mine quite flat. However, I mean I could get the right end of this. I could pull this loop as far up as I wish so that you could have a really shaggy effect if you were doing a rug. And at the end you can clip all these so that you have individual tufts. So it really is up to you what you prefer. Okay, so one done. So back to our hook, we go right beside it. Okay, you're not leaving large gaps. You're more or less going in right beside it. Push it again right down to the flank. You're hooking it in and you're pulling it through. Okay, and if you need to use your fingers, it can be a bit stiff when you start. And you can see there we start to form a line. This hessian is quite sturdy hessian. Pull the hook, make sure it's caught, pull up through. And really, this, as I say, is called hook bag rug. And that's it. After that, It. So you continue along your line. I would generally do the outside, then I do my lines on the inside, and then I would fill each of my gaps with different colours. Now I want to go back to uh, this one. Okay. Now I don't know if you can see, I drew a large circle, and inside here there's a, an inner circle. As I say, this is going to be a wreath. Now whenever I'm doing something like this, I go in the direction of travel. I think it's easier. Now you can certainly fill in little sections as you go round, but your fabric tends to get caught and you get all tangled up and then bits pop out. So I think it's easier when you do a rag rope, go in the direction of travel. On the underside, I just wanted to just show the underside, People will ask me sometimes, but does not all fall out? Do not need to tie knots or do something, you know, to make it all stay together? And magically, no, you don't. It stays together. Um, and all I do is then clip, you know, like some of these little ends here. I'll tidy that up just by clipping them off. But once you start to pack everything, you know, layer upon layer, it just stays there. It's magic. So back here to my red. So it's the same technique, only this time I'm going in a circle. Um, sometimes when you look at the underside, can you see there, there looks like there's a gap where the hessian is showing through and there's no fabric. So I would put my finger here, turn it over and see where it comes out on this side. And there is a little gap. Now, when I set that flat, you don't see the gap. But if you find that, mm, really, I would prefer that more compact, then when you're finished just take a tiny piece of your fabric and fill in that little gap and that's fine. So back to this. So we're going in the direction of travel. Of course it's a circle, start anywhere. There's different uh, widths of the weave on Hessian. This is quite an open weave and it's a lot easier to deal with. That's it. Okay, so I don't know if you can see there that's quite open and if you look at this weave can you see it's more dense I don't know if you can pick 
that up. So this one that's slightly more open is an easier weave to work with. Now where's my string? Okay, so it's the same again. Push in. Remember to go right the way up the shank. Make sure your fabric's caught and go through. And you start to get into a rhythm where you use this hand to feel where you are at the back and to feel your fabric. And then you just pull through. And you'll end up being able to sit in front of the television and just work away until you're finished. And as you can see, I'm going in the direction of travel, pushing my hook in. Now, some people, when they try rag rugs, um, they tend to wrap their hook which you don't want to do, it's too bulky. As long as you make sure your fabric is in front of the hook so that it's catching there, okay, and then pulling it through. I, I find it easy enough working on the table. Uh, some people prefer a better tension. And if you do like a better tension, you could put your hessian on a frame or if you had a very large embroidery hoop, you could do it sections at a time and that would give you a little bit more tension um, if you might, you might find that easier. Uh, I quite like working with it on my knee. Uh, and most of the people who would have been living here in the cottage um, would have done it this way. So as the children are cutting strips, the older girls and you know, the mother would be sitting doing this. Now they wouldn't have had a hook, you know, similar to mine. They would use what they had, and this would have been the type of clothes peg. Uh, and the one of these legs would have been cut off, and this would have been sharpened more into a point, and that would have been used similar to this. Again, some people could have had a hook made uh, a blacksmith could easily make a hook, so it was just really dependent on what you had. Um, as industrialisation came about, um, a lot of people started to go and work in the local mills, and at the end of the day, uh, they would have lifted scraps off the floor and brought those home, and those scraps would have went into making maybe a quilt or indeed a rag rug, depending on what it was they were working on. So at the end of the day, say they started at Christmas and they worked at it in the evenings by the fireside until they finished their project. Okay, so once you have made your piece, uh, how do you finish? Uh, obviously we don't want to leave it with all the frayed edges around it. So really what you have to do, remember we had to leave a two inch gap and all you have to do then is uh, turn it over and start to fold these in and once you fold them in you get a needle and thread and then you stitch the hessian to the back of your rag rug piece and you just work your way around until everything is folded in that you can't see the hessian any longer and if you see here uh, there's a piece I did and it's all sewn in but if you still think you know you want something to make that look a bit tidier what you can do is sew a piece of linen maybe on the back or if you've got a little piece of felt and um, now be careful if you're using these for a coaster because if you have uh, felt it could be slippy uh, think always about the purpose that you're creating your rag rug for but I say this is a coaster and I try to leave that quite flat um, so that it wouldn't really slide about too much. Uh, if you're doing the wreath, then you have to cut into the centre of the circle and as you fold these in, you will be folding that the other way to meet so that that is a gap obviously for a wreath. Now when I finish this wreath, this is too large, so I will trim this around the edges just to bring it in a little bit now that I'm finished and I know it's not going to fray. And even I could get my sewing machine and put a little hem around there before I turn it in 
and I will put some kind of felt on the back of this because it'll be on the door um, but then I look at it sometimes and I think maybe I'll just fill in the whole gap and it could be a centerpiece on the table at Christmas time so that's the beauty of it you can change your mind as you go if you don't like the color just pull the strands out if you want to change the pattern that's fine you just work as you go it's very relaxing it's recycling you're using up things that maybe are no good any longer uh, and even fabric like this I like it I do like a bit of bling and you wouldn't think that that would work but it does so on the piece that I was showing you earlier with the black edging um, I will put little bits of this I think in some of the smaller areas so I hope you enjoy making your own rag rug piece if you do make a piece let us see how you get on um, I say my name is Madeline from Kathleen's Attic and if you do need any advice you can check me out on our Facebook page and thank you all very much and I hope you enjoy your project <music>